Praise God. Give Darnell a hand. Man, are we a golf church or are we a football church? Thank you. I, I, I don't like uh, quiet. I, I don't like that either. I repent, God. I repent. <laughs> Yikes. I, that's how I feel. We're so sorry, Madden. I did not mean to do that. I apologize. You know, um, did you know that there's some things that are going on right now? Poor girl. <laughs> Startling. That scared me. <laughs> you know, there's some things that are going on in the natural that are kind of indicators. Can you turn me up, please? This is not, I can't really hear. Thank you. There we go. Yeah, I can hear myself. Can you all hear me better? You hear me now? Good, good, good. You know, there's some things that, you know, God uses natural things to give us uh, encouragement and to give us, you know, kind of a direction where he's trying to get something to you. Has anybody ever realized that before? Sometimes we get so thick-headed that we don't realize he's talking. Has anybody besides that, me been that way before? No, oh, you guys, all the holy saints in the house, right? Well, there's something that happened last week that was just a great reminder uh, uh, to me of how important it is to never give up. Has anybody faced a situation where you've wanted to give up? You might be in that right now, or even has anybody besides me, because I have given up before on things. There's things that I've just recently picked back up. Has anyone given up on something? Yeah, lost your hope, maybe felt like you lost your strength. Maybe you're like, man, I don't really know what to do. Well, there's some good news that I want to show you, and uh, I, I found the video, and I wanted to put it up there. I got, I got it on there for Grace. And so, Ryan, what I need you to do is turn up the volume on the pro presenter really loud, and I want you to drop the lights if you could, Gracie, before we put the video up. It should be right there in the preaching right after the declaration. I'll put it right there. I want you to Time see something. For our white Watch claw this. Race replay. What do you guys see as we look back? Well, first of all, he did a fantastic job, Sonny Leon, getting from the 21 post down into the inside going into the first turn, and now this is going into the far turn. He had moved around one horse. He's in the two path right now, and he's going to move around one more horse that doesn't seem to be running very fast, and he's moving. So Sonny Leon guides him between horses, and now he really starts to accelerate, and he'll move back in as he, as he approaches the middle of the turn. Watch him move back to the inside rail. That was a really big move right there, because then the, the table is set for him to just run up the rail as the other front runners tire. Epicenter's two and a half lengths in front there. He was further back than usual early, but he handled it beautifully, stormed to the lead. Sandon had a dream trip along the rail for most of the race. He swung out perfectly. It was the battle between the two horses we thought were the best. And out of the clouds, a lightning strike from Rich Strike. I think all of us were focused on that battle. Here are the two terrific horses battling here down the stretch and just look at the move. Yeah, he actually had a, just a tiny bit of anxiousness there. He had to steer around Messier, who was stopping directly in his path. Horse didn't mind. Uh, look, Jerry and I have been doing this a long time, right? 80 combined derbies for you two. We had to look up how to pronounce Sonny Leon. With right. you, with right. you. We talk to trainers all the time. I don't believe we've ever spoken to Eric Reed. It's, it's possible. But he did a fantastic job. He, he rode him like he's won three derbies already. That oh. was our White Claw race replay. Praise God. <laughs> that was awesome. And for some of you people that maybe haven't noticed what's happened last week, if you turn me the lights back up, what you just saw, what you just witnessed, was the Kentucky Derby of 2022. Now, what you just saw, and even the announcers, I don't know why they put that music in the background because you couldn't really, really hear what was going on, but what had happened is that horse, its name was Rich Strike. Rich Strike was not even scheduled to run in the Kentucky Derby. Okay? Here's some facts that I got for you. 30 seconds before the deadline, the 20th horse scratched, and Rich Strike moved in. 30 seconds. Before, it's like not even a chance. And not only that, Rich Strike was in the worst position coming out of the gate, the furthest outside. Now listen to this. Um, 
It started in the worst position on the outside of the track, had to make his way through the field of 19 other horses. This horse's racing career was seven races, only one win. How many times have we gone through something and it doesn't seem like we've won? But see, if you don't give up and when it matters most and you keep running and you keep trusting God, he'll do something that only he can do. His jockey, Sonny Leone, had never been in the Kentucky Derby. The horse had never been in the Kentucky Derby. The trainer, uh, Eric uh, Reed, had never raced a horse in the Kentucky Derby. As a matter of fact, listen to this. He, he lost uh, 20 horses previously in a fire, and he thought about closing shop altogether. It's like, I don't know if we're even going to make it. But he heard about a horse that had been sired, and its name was Rich Strike, and he bought that horse for $30,000. Right? $30,000 from nothing, not even placed, to winning $1.83 million in a day. See, I'm here to tell you that it's not over yet. He went from literally, I watched that race, I don't know how many times. He went from literally last place to first place in a matter of under a minute. 30 seconds before, he wasn't even supposed to race. That's why it's so important. The word says to be instant in season and out of season. That means you have the word ruminating on the inside of you. What's inside of you? Is it some series that you're watching on Netflix or is it the word? What comes out of you when you hit your thumb with a hammer? Is it, oh, squeak? Or is it, praise the Lord? See, there's a difference that it makes when you have the word on the inside of you. The announcers didn't even recognize he was in the race. They had their mind on Epicenter, who Epicenter was favored to win. But at the last second, he kept fighting and fighting and fighting. It's a true sea biscuit type of a story happening again. And I'm telling you, if you don't give up and you follow what God's word says about your situation, you're going to come out victorious every time. Amen. See, let me tell you something. I, uh, I, I was woken up the other night, and it could have been I was in a lucid state of sleep, you know, where, you know, where you're kind of dreaming, and then you, you don't know, am I awake? Am I asleep? Did I hear that with my natural ears, or was that part of my dream? Well, it was about four something in the morning, maybe five, uh, and I heard bump, 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 like somebody tapping their finger on my window of my house. Uh, can you imagine, I, as a man, I woke up and I was like, I'm going to protect my family right now. And I, so what did I do? I went around and I said, whoa, 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 what am I doing? Walking around, I don't, I don't got nothing. I went and grabbed my gun. I've got guns all in my house. So you do not want to break into my house is what I'm going to say. Okay? So, so I, I, you know, I watched enough, you know, action movies that I got my gun and I got my little light. And I was like. You know, you know, you know how it is. You got all your stuff going through your head. Like, okay, okay. And so I went to every window of the house and flashed the light. I said, do I see anybody? Do I see anybody? <laughs> but let me tell you something. There's something about, uh, it, and, and there is one time, I, actually it was on a Sunday morning before coming to church. I come outside and I look over and there's someone breaking into my neighbor's uh, vehicle. So what I do, I went back inside my house, grabbed my gun again, <laughs> cocked it, went back outside, and they heard the clock, clock. They disappeared. They ran. <laughs> well, the police caught them later on that day, and they said, thank you. You know, he, they had been tearing through houses all throughout the community. But there's something about when you're inside your house, and the enemy's trying to break in from the outside, and he hears the <laughs> of the shotgun. You know the shotgun's one of the best guns for home protection because you can just <laughs> And it's going to spray in a general direction. And when the enemy hears, when the intruder hears the <coughs> of the weapon that you have on the inside, when he hears the sound of what you have on the inside, it's greater than what's on the outside, and it makes the enemy run. There's something on the inside working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. 
You got to get that word building up on the inside of you. And, and so I was studying over some things. We've been in grace for a minute, and we were talking about access to heaven last week. And, and I wanted to really get us into not just an excitement, not an emotion, but a true understanding of the power of the promises of God. See, when God says something, like when Darnell, what he was just saying about the book of Malachi, that is a word from God through the prophet Malachi to his people. And God literally says in that letter, he says, I am God, I change not. And you know why he says that? Because there have been people talking, man, what good is it to serve God? What good is it to go to church on Sunday morning? I could watch online in my pajamas. And that, that's, that's fine that, you know, if, if you can't make it. There's people right now watching from Tennessee, Mississippi, um, California. There's people watching all over right now that can't be here physically. But if you can be in the house of God physically, you need to get there. Because there's something that you can receive in God's house that you're not going to receive from watching online. I know for a fact because there's times that I've tried to watch online and I would sit there fully focused, but then someone would say something, hey, hey, dad, by the way, or hey, by the way, and I'm like, oh, hold on, push pause. And in real life, you can't push pause sometimes, right? You, God wants your undivided attention. And so God's saying, hey, look, I, I want you to give me your undivided attention because I've got some things for you that's going to make your life so much easier. I don't know about you, but I think one thing that the, 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 uh, the media world got right was Office Depot. They came out with a commercial that had the easy button. You guys remember that? In fact, we have it somewhere. We literally bought the button that says easy on it. So and then we hit it. Beep. It doesn't work, but we bought it. You know, some friends of ours did. So wouldn't it be so much better in your life if things start getting tough or rough or whatever and you just can hit the easy button? Well, God's word can be the easy button for your life. Doesn't mean that you're not going to go through, you know, trouble. Doesn't mean you're not going to have challenges. But what you do have is you have a promise. Now, see, the word that we, when we hear promise, we think, oh, that means nothing in today's culture. It means nothing in America today. As a matter of fact, um, I know that there's different societies and different races that, that say different things, but there's one race that I'm actually, I, I have this in my blood is the Native American blood, okay? And one of the things that they have done is they've had, they did not understand the thought or the idea of someone lying. Because what they understood was covenant. Same thing with the Jewish people, whenever, or Eastern understanding of a covenant. Whenever you went into covenant, what that meant is there's no way you were going to break this thing. And that's how a lot of the land was stolen from Native Americans is because they lied or they broke the covenant or treaty or pact that they made with them. And see, in the old understanding of covenant, if you went into a covenant with someone and you broke that covenant or lied, your own family would hunt you down and kill you. That's how serious it was. Because there's something about a promise a promise is a guarantee, a title deed. That's what faith is. Hebrews 11, 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence, the title deed of things that you cannot see. And, and so, you know, God's given us some promises. He's given us promises of peace, promises of hope, promises of healing, promises of provision. So if you have lack, there's a promise of a full supply. If you have uh, something in your body that's saying opposite of what God's word says, his word is the promise, the title deed, that healing is already yours. And so here's one thing I will say about myself and about Encounter Church and the Encounter family is we don't preach uh, culture. We don't preach whatever the culture is. Oh, I don't want to hurt their feelings or oh, I don't want to offend anybody. Too bad. The word of God says that it will offend you. Okay? I'm here to offend you this morning. But not in a negative or haughty or prideful way. In a way to do what? Bring change into our life. 
See, God wants you to receive his word so you can hit the easy button for your life. Amen? And, and so the first thing that we're going to look at is what has been given to us. If you are born again, you have Jesus on the inside of you. You actually have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. Say, I have, I have. the Holy Spirit on the inside of me. Now, 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 I know you're saying it like it's a class or, or like you're in, um, you know, community service or, or whatever, some court-appointed type of a thing. But when you get this on the inside of you, you will say it differently. You're like, I have the Holy Spirit inside of me. You'll be, you'll be saying like this, I have a million dollars, right? I'm debt-free with a million dollars in my bank account. You'll say it a little differently when it starts becoming revelation to you. And you know what revelation is? Revelation is what Darnell so eloquently showed us this morning. He had dollars upon dollars in his pocket. It was already there. We just didn't see it. That's what revelation is. It's already there for you. You just don't see it yet. So he's going to open our eyes to see things that are already ours. Because you know what? Healing's easy. Provision is easy. You know, salvation is easy too. It's walking out and renewing your mind that's the hard part. You got to change that. So say, I'm changing. Now we're going to look at the word for a little bit this morning and we're going to unpack some things. And we're going to get revelation on some stuff because here's the thing about having a renewed mind. See, it's the word that renews your mind. And if you want to have the best life, you need to have a renewed mind life. You're, 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 you, you right now, you have something that you have failed at or someone has done you wrong in, and that is what is keeping you from walking into the fullness of your blessing. You know why I know that? Because that's what happened to me. It's happened to me numerous times, and it will probably happen again. But you know what? That does not become my basis. That does not become my foundation. Remember last week, it was so important. We learned about foundations. It's foundations. If you have a solid foundation of the Word of God, not your emotions, not your feelings, and the, what the Word of God says, then you can build something on top of that. You can build upon the promises of God's word and see what he has for you and not what society or religion says you can't have. Amen. We're going to get free this morning. Turn with me to Romans chapter 14. Now, when Jesus came, we learned this last week, Jesus preached what? The kingdom of God. He did not preach the kingdom of Jesus or the gospel of Jesus. He preached the gospel, the good news of the kingdom of God, uh, meaning this. Now we have grace. We have something we can't earn or deserve, but now God's kingdom, his way of doing things is now at our disposal or at our, uh, at our hand for us to take part of. Now, just like I said previously in, in sermons past, if I were in Italy I would operate the way Italy operates. I might drive on the left side of the road. I might have the steering wheel on the right side of my car. I may not be able to crosswalk or do a jaywalk or whatever it may be because the laws or the ways of the kingdom of Italy are different than the ways or laws of the kingdom of the United States of America. I'm prophesying the United States of America. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So, so look at this. It says, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. It's not what you can put in or on you. But here's what the kingdom of God is. You ready for it? God's way of doing things is this righteousness. So what is righteousness? Righteousness is right standing with God as if sin never existed in your life. Doesn't matter what you messed up on last week or last month or last year. Guess what? When you ask Jesus to forgive you and you put it under the blood of Jesus, he remembers it no more. And you are complete in right standing with God. As if sin never even existed. That means it says because of righteousness, we can boldly approach the throne of what? 
grace and obtain help in the time of trouble. So here's what the kingdom of God is. It's righteousness, that's one. Peace, you know what peace means? You remember this? Nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken. So you're in right standing with God as if sin never existed. You have nothing missing, nothing lacking, and nothing broken. And what? On top of all that, joy. Not just joy, but joy in what? The Holy Spirit. So all of this that's enabled and available to you is in where? Holy Spirit. Where does the Holy Spirit reside? In us. So you have righteousness in you, peace in you, joy in you. There's the little reggae gospel song that's like, righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. You remember that song? That's the kingdom of God, everybody. You guys remember that? Okay, well. One person, yes, yes. It's a funny song. You should hear it sometime. But it's something to get on the inside of you. You have righteousness. You have peace. You have joy in the Holy Spirit. That's the kingdom of God. And then he goes, don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Yes, we do. We all want to be part of the kingdom. But see, religion doesn't want you to realize that you can walk in righteousness. Religion doesn't want you to have peace that passes all your understanding. Religion doesn't want you to have joy. They want you to carry heaviness, depression, oppression, anxiety. That's the thing that the world has for you. The church has kind of adopted that because the church talks about so much how you feel. I told you I'm coming for you this morning. I just, I don't, I don't really feel like, like, like the, the Lord is saying. Well, then you're not reading your Bible. Because the Lord doesn't talk about how you feel. The Lord talks about what he says, and that's supposed to override how we, how we feel. You know how many feelings I've had since 4 a.m. this morning? About 700. Do I really want to get up? Do I have to take a shower? Do I need to brush my teeth? I really don't want to. I want to go back to bed. No, no. And then I'm like, oh, thank you, God. And then all of a sudden I got these feelings of happiness. Man, it's going to be good today. And then I see us. And then, oh, my gosh, where is everybody? Oh, it's a terrible feeling. Oh, and is everybody going to do? And it, it go up and down and all around. Your feelings are false. Your feelings are worse than Oklahoma weather. It was 90 degrees yesterday. By the time I, I was driving home, it was cooled down to like 60-something. Next thing I know, 2 in the morning, it's cold and hail is beating on the windows of my house. All I needed was some snow. We could add all four seasons in a day. See, feelings are false. Say that with me. Feelings are false. See, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost is a promise. Isn't that good news? That's good news. See, you don't got to wait for peace. You bring it. You don't got to wait for peace in a situation. You bring it. You don't got to wait to feel joy. You bring it. You know, whenever, I, I'm from the South, and whenever someone would invite us over somewhere, we'd be like this, hey, what do you want me to bring? Oh, nothing, nothing, no, no. You know, it's rude if we showed up at their house with nothing. That's just how it was. You, just, because here's what you're doing is you're saying, I want to honor you for inviting me into your house. And so I want to honor you with just this, this little bit. And so you walk up in there and you bring in something. And usually, you you know, something that they already like. And so when you roll up into a situation that, that says, hey, there ain't no peace here. It's nothing but chaos. You know, it could be your job, could be your family, could be your relationship, could be some kind of traumatic event, whatever, that's bringing chaos. You've got to bring peace into the situation. What did Jesus do? What did they do? They woke him up in the middle of a storm. It says that water was coming into the boat, and the professional fisherman said, hey, we're, we're going to die. I would think that a professional fisherman would know whether or not the, the ship was going to sink. 
They've exposed, they, 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 they've exhausted every effort to keep the thing afloat. They're like, nope, we're dead. It's done. We've never seen a storm of this proportion. Our boat's never been this full. We're going to die. Don't you care, Jesus? And that's what we do so many times. We talk to God, God, don't you care? I've been doing this thing for so long. I've been trusting you for so long. Don't you care? It seems like the same thing over and over. God, don't you care? Jesus gets up, wipes the sleep out of his eyes, and he goes, really? Oh, my gosh. Well, peace, be still. And then he turns and looks to his disciples, and he goes, why didn't you talk to the storm? See, we think, wow, that's Jesus. We can't do that. Remember, they had spent every day with him, and they were with him all day, and he's preaching about the kingdom every day, telling them the authority that they have to talk to the storm, to talk to the problems in your life and the chaos, and speak peace into it. You're anointed. Say, I'm anointed. You're anointed to speak to your situation. The enemy does not want you to know that. The enemy does not want you talking to your situation because if you do, it has to leave. Your feelings may not leave, but the situation will. See, we don't have to wait for circumstances to change in order for us to have a good feeling. Like there's so many times I, I, I've been in this room in particular, in other rooms, and it would be like, boom, you feel the presence of God, and oh, and people are crying, and they're excited, and jumping up and down, or whatever it may be, and like, man, that was a good service. And what are they basing that on? The emotion. The feeling. And so many times we would much rather come and have our hands laid on us and be prayed for than actually do what the word says about our situation. See, you've got to bring what's already on the inside of you. Say, I'm bringing my own. See, you've already got it. It's already part of yours. It's not something you have to earn or work or deserve. It's already there. So if you're not having righteousness, peace, and joy in your life, Something's off. You're living in a low-level thinking. And you've probably been in a low-level speaking. Like, oh, man, what, what about this? And what are we, we going to do about that? Oh, what are we gonna... Here's the problem that, that I've seen in the church that we're going to fix today. There's too many double agents in the body of Christ. You know, like the CIA, the spies. I'm a double agent. Like, I'm a spy for a spy, right? I'm acting like a spy for this kingdom, but I'm really a spy for that kingdom. And so what we do is that we're in the world, but we're not of the world, but we're acting like the world. And it gets really confusing. And so what we really need to do is stop being double agents uh, and, and live for one kingdom, and that's the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. See, we don't need to be born of one kingdom, but then representing the other. We don't represent the world. We shouldn't be sounding like the world, talking like the world, complaining like the world. It says that we're to be filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with joy, filled with peace. Now, does that mean that you can't have feelings? No. You should have feelings. God gave you feelings so what you can feel and, 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 and enjoy, but they're not meant to dominate you. See, you are spirit. Say, I'm spirit. You have a soul, and that's what the devil's after. He's after your soul, which is your mind, your will, and emotions. Because he knows if he can get those, if he can work in those, then he's got your body. Your body's going to fall in line with whatever your soul's doing, right? So here's the thing that you need to realize. You can't stop things from coming at you, but you can stop things from affecting you. See, I used to think when I was, you know, a younger uh, believer 
younger Christian in the Lord that because now I'm, I'm this word of faith and I understand the power of my words, I understand I have authority, I'm seated at the right hand of God, all things are under my feet, I thought that I should not have one single solitary problem. And that if I had a problem that I wasn't in the will of God and I wasn't even enough faith, I didn't have enough faith. And that was a bald-faced lie from the enemy. See, what, what really was going on, he says, hey, you're in this world, you're not of it. He says, you're going to have some challenges, but guess what? Be of good cheer. I have overcome them some. All. All of them. And, and so here's what you can stop the enemy from doing, stealing from you. The enemy's been stealing your joy and your peace for too long. The enemy's been stealing your hope for too long. He's been killing your dreams for too long. He's been destroying your finances for too long. And so, so we're, we're going to change some things. And here's the thing about a person of faith. A person of faith does not allow what is seen to affect their countenance or their attitude. See, when you're in faith, whatever's going on around you doesn't affect what's in you. If you walk up and you're like, oh, I'm just so tired. Oh, so tired. Well, what are, you, what are you doing? You're aligning what's on the inside up with what's on the outside. Do, do I go home and take a nap on Sundays? Absolutely. It's best day. Best day, Sunday. I'm like, yeah, great way to start the week. Get up, worship, oh, get the word, get some fellowship, take a nap. It's awesome. But see, I don't go around going, man, I'm just, I'm exhausted. I'm so tired. Because guess what will happen? I'll be exhausted and I'll be tired all the time. And then it was, man, I just always seem to get so far and then something happens. I'm waiting for that other shoe to drop. Well, what you need to do is you need to change what you're saying you got to change what you're believing. Because, see, there's one thing that God created, created us in his image and likeness, and he did create us with one thing that, that he's not going to mess with, and that's our will. And that's what the enemy comes after, is he comes after your will. He knows that if he can get your will into the story. Uh, let, me, let me give you some scripture on that. See, see. Paul, he was in Philippians, and actually it says in Philippians uh, 11, I think it was, that he learned how to abase and he learned how to abound. He learned how to be happy with what he had. And guess where he wrote the, the letter to the church of Philippi? In prison. The situations were less than ideal, but he says, you know what? My God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory. He was in there with molesters and thieves and, and, and murderers and all these type of things around him. But he said, you know what? All's good. Why? He had righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit evident in his life. He may have been in the prison, but the prison wasn't in him. See, what we need to realize is our faith is connected to where our attention is. I'm going to say it again. Your faith is connected to where your attention is. Whatever your attention is on, whatever your focus is on, is what your faith is going to be connected to. And so if your faith is connected to the wrong attention, your faith is going to go in the wrong direction. Because faith works for the good or for the bad. Right? Has anybody had faith that something bad's going to happen? Man, I just feel like something bad's going to happen. Something bad's going to happen. I don't know. I just feel like something bad's going to happen. Well, and then all of a sudden something bad happened? That's faith in the wrong thing. Well, you can have faith in the good things, right? So what we need to do is realize that where our faith is, our attention is. And so how do we get our attention off? It's real easy. It's not hard. You just do this. You turn your attention to a different direction. 
If you're in a, in a place of critical or, or anxiety or, or fear or worry, you turn it to what the Word says. Amen? So we have to remove the poor me mentality. That's what kept the children of Israel in the wilderness. Did you bring us out here to die? What kind of leader are you? Uh, 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 what are we going to do? Oh, we're going to eat this manna all the time? I'm tired of Krispy Kreme donuts. We want some quail, right? See, you, you, you have to draw on what's on the inside of you. you. You know, you've walked around, you've been around people that they always draw on the negative. I mean, they even, like, they did something great. Like, I remember, like, you know, playing soccer or, or football or something, and someone did something, and I was like, man, that was awesome. He's like, yeah, I don't know what happened. I normally would mess that up. Like, they automatically go to the negative. They can't even celebrate or acknowledge the good thing that happened in their life. See, we've got to renew our thoughts. We got to renew the way we think about things because if we can do that, it says that our entire life will be transformed. And that word transform is metamorpho in the Greek, and that literally means a new type of species. That means that you're not affected or impacted by the things around you. You're a new creature. Say, I'm a new creature. But see, God can't heal what you hold on to. If you're holding on to old ways and old methods and old hurts and old things, old meaning it could have been yesterday, you got to let it go. There's so many times I remember as a, as a, a child, you know, I'd get in trouble about something. I'm like, and my, my parents or my mom would be like, now, now, you need to ask for forgiveness. I'm like, well, I'm sorry. Oh, forgive me. Oh, I forgive you, but I'm not going to forget it. Has anybody ever said that? I have. Has anybody ever heard it? Uh, yeah, we all have. You know what? That's not forgiving. That's holding unforgiveness in your heart. Now, there are safeguards, and there are things that you need to protect yourself from, and I'm not making light of that, but you need to learn to let go of things so God can do the new thing that he wants to do in your life. Amen? See, all of these promises that are available in this word right here, every single one of them, they're a guarantee. They're done. It's a title deed. It's yours. But it's determined upon the person. 100% determined upon the person. Did you know that your will can keep you out of God's plan for your life? Your will. Well, I, I will not do that. See, that's your will. Your will will keep you out of God's plan for your life. Not even your plan, His plan. Did you know that his plan is better than your plan? Way better. Did you know his plan is higher than you could ever possibly imagine or dream? And I can dream pretty big. Has anybody here dream big? He said, my, my plan is even better than yours. It's even higher than yours. Isaiah says that my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts, for my ways are higher and my thoughts are higher. And then he goes on to say, uh, later on, he goes, you know, my word that goes out, guess what? It doesn't ever return unto me void. And he says, it always accomplishes that which I send it to do. See, so what we need to do is we need to get our mind brought in line with God's will. Let me give you some scripture on this, not just my, my opinion, right? First of all, let me say this. If you're born again, according to Corinthians, this is not going to pull up on the screen, but according to first, I think it's first or second Corinthians six, first Corinthians six, I think it is. It says that you are bought with a price, that you're now no longer your own. Do you know that? We even make songs about it. My life is not my own. To you I belong. Remember? Get myself, get myself to you, right? Your life is no longer your own. It's God's. Check this out, Isaiah, Isaiah 1, verses 19, says this, if, everybody say if, see that's dependent on you, not God, it's dependent on you, if you are what? 
willing and obedient. There's so many times that we're obedient, but we're really not willing. Well, I'll do it, but I really don't think anything's going to happen. Guess what? It won't. Because your will got in the way. What you need to do is to say, Lord, not my will, but your will. What did Jesus say in the garden? Not my will, but your will. So his will knew this. Hey, I'm not going to like this. I don't want to do it, but what am I going to do? I'm going to subject or surrender my will to the will of the Father. And if we'll surrender our will to what he's wanting, we'll see fruit that far bounds anything we could ask, hope, think, or dream. Amen? So it says if you're willing and obedient, you shall, everybody say shall, you shall eat the good of the land, but if you refuse and rebel, you'll be devoured by the sword. And then to put a seal the deal, he says, for the mouth, of the Lord has spoken. This is God talking. Not a preacher. Not a person. This is God talking. I love what the, the message translation says this. If you will willingly obey, you'll feast like kings. Isn't that good? If you will willingly obey, that means don't do what your flesh wants to do. Don't do what your mind wants to do. Do what God's word says. If you're willing to obey, you'll feast like kings. But if you're willful and what? Stubborn. If you're willful and... So it got real quiet in here. If you're willful and stubborn, what happens? You'll die like dogs. Oh, my goodness. This is God talking. That's right. God says so. I don't know about you, but I don't want to die like no dog. <laughs> I do not want to die like a dog. So what am I do? I'm going to be willing and obedient. Yes, Lord. See, the devil knows that if he can take your will, he can take your life. He can, keep, he can rob you from the blessings of God. You know why so many times we don't like to worship in the, in the audience, in the congregation? Because our flesh doesn't want to. Well, I don't really feel like it. Right? I'm waiting for a feeling. No. See, your worship is one of the most powerful weapons you have. And if you would actually worship above what you feel like, you would see more breakthrough in your life. I'm telling you. Because worship is your weapon to, against the enemy. In fact, your worship is what the enemy's job used to be. He got fired and you got his job. It's pretty amazing if you read in the, the revelations and also read in Isaiah you know that our job is literally what Lucifer's job was is to worship and to magnify and to praise and to worship our creator the king of kings the lord of lords amen see I, I love this because you can get excited about something in your heart and in your emotions but if your will isn't aligned with it you're never going to see it come to pass and so the devil wants to mess with your mind because that's the door to the will. Psychology Today says that we think 50,000 to 80,000 thoughts a day. And over 80% of those thoughts are negative. That's not very encouraging. But if we will get up and get the word in us first... But see, here's a, something that's very interesting. When Jesus was in the wilderness, led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness for 40 days, the enemy came at him with the word of God. So we know that the word is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, but it's the word with faith that makes the difference. The word by itself is something that someone just quotes. But the faith in the Word of God, faith that the Word is the power, faith that the Word is made flesh through Jesus, that's where the difference is. Amen? You ever notice that, you know, like the real expensive 
stores never really have 50% off. Yeah. They don't have no discounts. They don't have no clearance. Ever. I've I said what? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So so like so so let's just say we go to Rodeo Drive. Roll up in Gucci or Chanel or or Bulgari or somewhere like that. But you don't go, hey, where's your where's your clearance room? Hey, where's your sale rack? They'd be like, what? Oh my god, I cannot believe you. That that was so last season. Even last season stuff is not on sale. You're still paying full price. You know why? Because the quality of the product will stand the test of time. The word of God will stand the test of time because the quality of the word will not fail. My kids, they, they say something to me like, I got these shirts that are older than my kids. I was like, she, they go, oh, I like that shirt, Dad. I like that shirt. I was like, yeah, it's 25 years old. They're like, what? How is it? It doesn't look that old. That's because it's quality. It's a good product. But you know if you go to Dollar Tree, that thing's going to break. Right? It's cheap. Right? And a, 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 a very good friend of mine gave me some words of wisdom, and they told me this. Cheap is expensive. <laughs> you know why? You're going to spend more on that cheap thing because it's going to break a couple of times than, pay, than paying for something good that's going to last a lot longer. The Word of God is going to last you a whole lot longer. And see, the enemy knows all about cheap because you ever notice that cheap is loud? You know the, the advertisements you get probably twice a week in your mail? Harbor Freight, this and the other. Like, I go and I buy stuff at Harbor Freight, but you know what? I know it's going to break in a little while. Right? But if I go and I buy the DeWalt or the Milwaukee product, I know I'm going to pay almost double. But I know that thing's going to last more than double the time and the job. That's how the Word of God is. The Word of God will stand the test of time, but the devil is the loud, cheap one trying to get you off of what God's promises are. Amen? Amen. See, God gave us very specific instructions on how to keep our mind strong against the enemy. Here's what it says in Isaiah 26, verse 3. It says, you will keep him in perfect Peace. What? Perfect peace. Perfect of nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken. How is that? I'm glad you asked. Your mind is stayed on God. And I trust in him. See, you'll keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. You know what stayed means? It means you've stayed in a place. You know what squatters are? You ever heard of a squatter? A squatter is someone that maybe you own a house and you're renting the house to them and they decide they don't want to pay rent anymore, but you cannot legally remove them because they are squatting on your property. And you have to go through all of this legalities and, and filing of injunctions and things like this to get them off of the property that's rightfully yours. Well, the enemy is a squatter, and he's staying on your property, your territory, your peace, your joy. It's already yours, but you got to remove them. How? You get your mind stayed on God, not on the problem, not on the issue at hand. you got to remove those thoughts that have stayed past their date. you got to say, I'm letting it go. I'm moving forward. I'm not going to hold on to what's been holding on to me. Amen? So, so here's how you do that. Let me just give you some practical things. So thoughts start coming, and they're like, hey, hey, why don't you come out of that room of peace? Hey, why don't you come on over here, and let's talk about somebody. Or, hey, why don't you come over here, and let's, let's complain about how it's so hard financially. Or, oh, let's, let's come out of this room of peace and joy, and why don't we talk about all what's wrong in your body because you're so many years old. 
No, I'm going to stay in my room. I'm going to stay in this peace. That's what you do. You just refuse. You say, no, I'm going to stay over here in peace. You got to say, no, I'm not coming out of my place of peace. I'm staying in my room. I'm staying in my place of peace. I'm staying in. No, I refuse to worry. I refuse to fear. I refuse to let my words loosen and cause my ship to sink. Amen? Here's another scripture for you. Romans chapter 8, verse 6. To be carnally governed by what you see, touch, feel, hear, or do. That's carnally minded is what? Death. But to be spiritually minded is what? And peace. So a disciplined mind is a mind of life and peace. So if you're not having that, you need to discipline your mind, right? How do you get your mind disciplined? By renewing it with the Word of God. It's literally yielding your soul, mind, will, and emotions to God. It's literally going, you know what? I'm not going to eat that. I really want to, but I'm not going to eat that. Oh, you know what? I'm not going to spend that. I know I really want it. I know I can put it on my credit card. I look so good with that. I'll just leave God to pay it off later. No, don't do that. Don't do that. It's going to rob you of some peace, okay? Come on. Well, I don't know you. what they did to me. It was so wrong and, and so this and so that. Let it go. Because that person's running around happy as a like, oh, da, 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 da. they have no idea. And it's only robbing you of peace. Now, I'm not making light of, of things done wrong. You may have had a terrible childhood or may have had something bad happen to you or, or you know, whatever it may be. But you have to choose to let it go. Amen. I would probably be bald-headed and have more wrinkles and belly rolls on me if I held on to everything done wrong to me in the past just seven years of pastoring, much less the past 50 years of my life. But see, you got to let it go. Say, let it go. Did you know that God knows more than you? Pay attention to me. I'm up here. Did you know God knows more than you? He's smarter than you. He has an answer for you. But our will gets in the way because we think we know all the answers. We think we know all the situation. And so the devil, he, he'll come right in. He'll steal your joy. He'll steal your peace. He'll steal those things from you. But so you got to renew your mind. I love what Dad Hagen said this. Dad Hagen says, your, a renewed mind needs to be uh, renewed about as much as you need to comb your hair. The mind needs to be renewed about as often as your hair needs to be combed. So if you don't have no hair, you know, maybe put some lotion on your head or something. Basically, it's a daily thing. You need to daily be renewing your mind. Sometimes, a couple times a day, because you walk out in this Oklahoma weather, that wind be blowing up like this, and your hair's all kinds of crazy. Right? And if you got a wig, it might be turned sideways. I don't know. Okay? See, getting saved is the easy part, but yielding to the Holy Spirit with your will is what takes discipline. It takes renewing of the mind with the Word of God. And so we're going to close out with a, a very popular, very strong scripture. And it's Romans chapter 12. And it says this. This is Paul saying this to us, the church. I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, and beg of you in view of all the mercies of God. Okay, listen to this. His mercies are new every morning. And he's saying this, hey, here's all these mercies that are available to you, but you have to make a decisive dedication of your body. What? Not my spirit? No, your spirit's already born again. 
It's your body and your will. So he says, present all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice, holy, devoted, consecrated, and well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable, rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship. So putting the fork down and doing the pushaways is literally spiritual worship. I'm talking to myself right now because I ate a bunch of junk yesterday. <laughs> now here, here's what I wanted to get to. Do not be conformed or so fashioned by this world that no one notices the difference. That's what the message says. But the Amplified says this. Don't be conformed to this world of this age, fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs, but be transformed, be changed by the entire renewal of your mind by its new ideals and its new attitude. You can carry a new attitude. Amen? Amen. And what will happen? You'll prove for yourselves what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in His sight for you. See, renewing the mind closes the door on depression. Renewing the mind closes the door to negativity. Renewing the mind closes the door to criticism. Renewing the door, re renewing your mind closes the door to pride. Renewing your mind with the Word of God closes the door to fear, to lack, to worry. We've got to renew our minds in the, 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 the promises of God. If you really want to walk in them, you've got to renew your mind. When you renew your mind, that means your will and emotion will line up. Remember, spirit, soul, mind, will, and emotion. You're renewing that daily because if you don't, your body's going to take over. Your body's going to be like, no, 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 I don't feel like doing that. So we're going to renew our mind. So here's what we got to watch out for. The enemy will love to tempt you with negative thoughts. He'll tell you something like, I heard that before. Oh, I tried that. No, it tried you and you failed. That's what I heard Brother Keith say one time. He said, he goes, well, I tried that faith thing. He's like, no, it tried you and you failed. That's the thing. And see, here's the great thing about faith is that faith, your hopes are fadeless. They never stop. They never give up. They never fall short because faith worketh by love. Amen? Amen. So see, what are we going to do when thoughts start coming? We're going to respond with words of faith. So if the devil starts talking to you about saying, say, no, 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 I'm not touching that with my mind. Here's what God's word says about my situation. Amen? Amen. You know, if you're, if you're dealing with something, get into to Psalms. Get into Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in, by still waters. He restores my soul. And he goes on to say, your strength is renewed. That means when you're not feeling like uh, having any strength, he's going to renew your strength. When you're going too fast and going, 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 he's like, slow down. Slow down. Don't, don't respond. Don't, don't respond with the energies of your flesh. Respond with the energies of faith. Amen. Because see, when we respond with faith, we're not going to give over to the works of the flesh. Amen. See, I want you to walk into the promises of God. I want you to walk into such a place that when you pray, things change. See, a lot of times I think that the reason why, the, 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 you know, Wednesdays and maybe sometimes men's prayer, the reason why there's not as many people that come to men's prayer or come to Wednesday nights is because they don't understand the power of prayer. Did you know prayer is what changed your life? Prayer is what took you from hell, death, and destruction into heaven, eternal life, peace, joy, righteousness in the Holy Ghost. Your prayer, when you learn to follow the Holy Spirit, when you learn to hear the voice of God and respond to what He's saying about your situation, there's nothing that's impossible for you. 
And so if we want to uh, walk into the power of his promises for our life, we have to let the word be the first and final authority. Amen? Amen. Amen. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you so much for your word this morning. We thank you that your word is what has done the work, and it's your word that we renew our mind and our wills. We yield our will to you. We allow your word to work in our minds, to no longer think of these natural, carnal type of things, but to think according to what your word says about our situation. And so, Father, right now, I just thank you for each and every person that as they hear that word that you're speaking to their specific need, to their specific desire, to their specific wants, Father, and you're answering those things and you're, you're giving them hope and giving them a, a strength and giving them a peace and a joy that's already on the inside of them. You're causing those things to rise up those things that the enemy has tried to cover up, those things that the enemy has tried to disappoint, I thank you, Father, that you're causing those things to come back to life, to be resurrected again. And, Father, I just speak into each and every person right now that that hope would be renewed and that hope would be restored and that strength would be revived in each and every one of their lives. And, Father, as they come to you, as they come to your word, Father, I thank you for a fresh revelation. And we come against any onslaught, any attack, any schism or division of the enemy right now. And we cut it off. We, we apply the blood of Jesus over each and every person's thoughts, hearts, and minds. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. And let's give God some praise this morning. When you leave here this morning, you've got those scriptures. Write them down or whatever. Get on YouTube, whatever. Get those things. My, my heart is fixed on you. My will is not going to be what I want to do, but you want to do. And start to get that word working on the inside of you guys. Because you start letting that word do the work, and you're going to come out on top every time. Amen? Amen. And also, another, I wanted to give you one more announcement. We have got, you do not want to miss a Sunday. You don't want to miss a Sunday, and here, here's why. We've got some surprises coming up for you. Starting next week, we got a surprise coming, and every week thereafter, we got some pretty exciting surprises. I don't want to give it all away, but you definitely want to come, and in fact, you probably want to get your friend and bring them with you too, because these the next couple of Sundays, the next six Sundays are going to be game changers. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, I love you. I call you blessed. I call you highly favored. Go out and be an encounter to someone else. Amen? You are dismissed.